After you completed the assessment of the lungs and the heart, you're going to continue assessment by working down to the abdomen. Inspect the abdomen. Look at the contour. Her abdomen's fairly flat. I don't see any, if you would look to see if any lesions or skin problems or deformities or bulges. Uh, umbilicus is um, flat. There's um, no bruising on the skin. Remember, this is the abdomen, so the second part you're going to do is auscultate. Do not go palpating and moving around, or it's going to change what you listen to. So you're going to auscultate first for the bowel sounds. You start in the right lower quadrant. And remember, th these are in um, four, you can look at four quadrants. The umbilicus is in the middle in the area when you're dividing it up. And so you're basically following the large intestine. And listen for bowel sounds. As you hear each of the four quadrants. You can use the bell to listen over for vascular sound. You can check around the xiphoid process underneath, listening for, to make sure you don't hear a brouet, which would be abnormal. Um, and, and you want to also listen if you can hear some vascular sounds, you can follow down where the two arteries go down, listening to the vascular sounds. So you've inspected, you auscultated. So the next part is then you percuss. You can do general percussion, which would normally give you a sound of timpani. This is under the lower part of the rib. It would be that you'd have a very loud timpani from the gastric air bubble. You know, we can do more percussion um, to, to find the size. If it gets dull from mid-axillary, that would be the spleen. And you can percuss also coming up to feel if order of the liver. So we're, we're going to do light palpation first, do gentle. If the patient complains of any pain in any area, you do that area last because once the net hurts, then everything's going to be uncomfortable and you won't know where the pain is located. So you, you know, that would have been getting a good history. So you palpate gently and then you go and do a deeper palpation to feel the underlying organs in that area and you can, you know, rolling your hand, gently make sure your hands are warm. Some people are really ticklish. If you touch somebody too lightly, it's going to make it really uncomfortable. You would also palpate over the bladder area, you know, where you've asked them about if they urinated well and when they last urinated. When we moved down there and notice I've kept her draped so that um, she's not exposed all over while we're checking the abdomen. Now we're going to check and you're going to palpate the inguinal area, check for the inguinal nodes, and also compare her femoral pulses. And then we work down. Now we're going to look at her legs. And you know, again, we're looking at skin, lesions, um, bruising, looking at the vascular pattern, going down to see um, the temperature of the skin. Does she have any edema? Check around the tibial tibial area if there's any edema depression there. You can palpate behind her knees with them slightly flexed to feel the popliteal pulses. Remember, notice I'm comparing pulses on both sides. You would compare the, this is the dorsalis pedis. If you go right um, between the big toe and the next toe and move up that ridge and you can fi find the pulse. If you go behind the um, malleus, and then feel the, um, if she has a, um, her malleolus, feel if there's a posterior tibial pulse, and compare that. Look at her toes, checking the foot, you know, temperature, if there's um, uneven between the two, feel the um, capillary refill to look at that, see if the, um, what her response time is in that area. Um, and check if there's any, again, skin lesions and problems. When we um, 
you want to start having them do range of motion to check muscular skeletal. I would have had her do the, the muscular skeletal on the top of um, her upper arms, having her do range of motion. If she puts her hands behind her neck like this and back like this, it shows full range of motion of the shoulder area. You would palpate each joint also as you're moving and you ask them to move. You're doing both passive and active range of motion and palpating around each of the joints. Remember, we'd already done the head, checking the, with the mandible and checking the neck, and we're checking on the wrist. The hands, you ask them to squeeze. If you have them squeeze your fingers like this, then they can squeeze tightly without causing you any pain. And um, to see if the strength is even, you ask her to push against you to check her resistance, and also on her legs and arms. I can ask her to pull her knees up to her chest to check the range of motion of the hip and to also palpate it at the same time. I want to also feel her knees to see if there's any bulging, any fluid, to see if they look symmetrical. Everything has to look symmetrical. Her ankles and check those movements. So then we've um, looked at most of her muscular skeletal while we're while we're having her lie down. We also want to now start finishing that when she stands, and we want to have her look at the, um, we want to do her neuro status and check with that. But with the muscular skeletal, when she does stand, the things, I'll show you the things that you would have them do. You would check their gait. How did they walk in? Or have them walk across the room in you know, a comfortable manner to see if their gait is straight and even. And then you would also look at the back, look to see if it's straight on the spine, the shoulders, the scapula, the hips, and to see how straight they can stand. Have them bend like a rag doll to look at the back to see, you know, to palpate the spine and to look to see if you have any, um, you're checking for scoliosis. Um, and so that way you've seen their entire, all their muscular skeletal sections. Now with the neuro, We've already talked to her about her mental status. We've checked her um, thought processes, her behavior, how her um, she's done her, uh, we've done level of consciousness and um, her appearance, how she appears. And we've um, looked at her um, cranial nerves when we did the head and neck. We've done all the cranial nerves. So you've done mental status, cranial nerves, and we just did all the motor stats. Opposite of that, we want to check sensory. So you can do sensory by light touch, have them close their eyes and ask them to say when, when they, you know, stroke lightly with cotton ball. There are many different sensory tests. You know, doing light touch is one, checking the arms, abdomen, and the lower extremities to compare if they, if they have any problems with sensory um, deprivation. You can do sharp and dull. I usually use a paper clip because that way it's not quite so sharp if they can, di you know, differentiate between that. Um, you can put an object in their hand and ask them to identify for um, stereognosis like a ring, penny, coin, and just say, can you tell me what this is and see if they can identify that by touch. I can also draw the graphesthesia. I can draw a number, like a three, and have them tell me what that is when their eyes are shut. So I'm, those are looking at my sensory integration areas. Then I've got, so without, with my sensory, I also have my um, motor, sensory, cranial nerves, mental status, and I want to do my reflexes. Um, reflexes, you can do the um, biceps, and her arm doesn't relax indeed, but I would remember their deep tendon. So on this one with the bicep, you actually put your thumb on the tendon and strike your thumb with that, and you would get a movement of her fingers. You do the triceps, you can have it several ways. You can have them hanging loose, and you hit the tricep directly on the back. The, and remember their tendons. You're not hitting joints. You're not hitting other areas. It's a deep tendon re reflex. And then the other is you can have them hold very loosely. And I usually put my hand here so I can feel them. And I'm going to strike across the tendon right here for the brachial radialis. 
there is um, for the patellar reflex, everybody's familiar with that, but remember you're not hitting the knee, you're hitting the tendon below there, to, and you have to have them sitting up, their knees really, their legs hanging down. And so you can do with the knee, the patellar, um, then you have the um, Achilles that you're going to hit to check for plantar flexion. If I hit the back of the, and I usually use the wide area, and have their fit really relaxed and rest in your hand, and you'll get a little plantar flexion with that. And the checking to make sure she's got a negative Babinski, and you would come from the heel and going up along in that arch around the foot, and she should have, her toes should flex in the plantar versus the Babinski, which would be normal if she was under under 15 months old. So it usually changes when they start walking. So those are just some of the reflexes that you that you do. Um, so again, mental status, motor, sensory, cranial nerves, reflexes. The last thing is the coordination tests or the cerebellar. So these are all our um, our tests, I call them the drunk tests. They're the ones to check that you can walk with heel to toe um, to see. You can stand and do the finger to the nose with the eyes shut. Um, if you have a patient that cannot walk and you want to test the lower extremities, you can ask them to run the heel of one foot along their shin to see if they can keep it on there. You know, otherwise, if they have a problem with that, they will have a problem keeping their there. You also can ask them, sorry my mannequin's going, uh, you can have them do a, uh, so those are lower, to do lower extremities. I want to also do upper extremities. I can ask them to do um, rapid alternating movement, put the hands back and forth on their knees and turn them. I can have them go from thumb to each finger. I can uh, have her close her eyes again, do the finger touch, there's finger nose, there's many different ones. So you usually want to do a couple upper and a couple lower so that you complete that. And that is the end of our exam. Thank you.